Well, hello everyone. This is my Brown 2 here. I was out last night and I've got my uh, 200 millimeter camera lens, uh, Canon camera lens, and I've got it on top of my Atlas Pro. I was going to use, well, I tried to use my lap, my old laptop, which I have not had going in pro uh, six months, over a year maybe, to image with. And I was going to connect everything up and have it, I was going to connect my auto guider. And I'm going after the Orion Nebula with the horse head in one image because that would be a great framing with this 200 millimeter and man nothing worked last night i i for what, I, what happened is i couldn't get the mount connected through the computer because i was going to use astrophotography tool or something like that to, in order to control it and everything but it just wouldn't read it nothing worked the auto guide wouldn't work the mount didn't work i think it had this something to probably the, the com ports or some nonsense like that i should have tried to connect everything up earlier in the day to see if everything worked and but anyways i didn't and i was out struggling around last night i actually ended up getting a couple hours worth of data because i did it the old-fashioned way which is how i'm going to do it tonight i used my old my old hand controller and i was controlling it that way and it worked great you know i, I had 60 second sh shots and the star stars were really round because it was tracking really well so why am I doing it tonight? Well, the answer is last night the, it was that fine wispy clouds. And so all the data was pretty much, uh, you know, it's unusable. I, I could see the stars are all like bloated outwards and it's like it's foggy. So um, I'm going to go out tonight. Tonight looks like it's uh, unexpectedly going to be clear and without those thin wispy clouds. So we'll, I'm going to do the same thing I did last night. Hopefully I will get just as good data, but I'm going to have to bag it with a computer and all that stuff until I try to work on it during the daytime. And maybe when it's warmer outside. As I said, this this is middle of winter time. Who the hell wants to be outside uh, doing all this crap? Uh, not only that, I'm double imaging too because I'm in the, my astronomy shed, which I can show you quickly over here. So anyways, that's all I wanted to show you. And uh, I might come back out tonight and tell you if I'm if it's working. And hopefully I'll have a good image, or at least a decent image. I always wanted to do something like this uh, for you. Uh, by the way, here's my setup. I have it, my tripod, and I have it on my um, scope buggy. And I have it, I used uh, little 2 by 4s to level it out. And that seems to work pretty well. I've had good luck doing it this way. Okay, I'm Kurt Zevitello, and you're watching AstroQuest 1. Okay, got everything successfully going. Uh, it's not as perfect of a night as uh, I had hoped. It, the, I didn't get started till later on. There was clouds, what a surprise. And it's also very dewy, uh, really bad. And in fact, my lens was starting to fog over, so I, I had to get the blow dryer treatment on it. And I, f I have a, another dew strap and I put that around it and that seems to keep it at bay. And I also had a little bit of trouble with my main scope uh, inside. For, for some reason, it was getting near to do a Meridian flip. And, and all I was doing was clanking, making this clank sound. I, I was really scared, but I I manually, well, I put, put it back on to, uh, parked it, restarted everything, and made sure it was past Meridian, and it seems to be working fine. So hopefully that was just a, a blip. Uh, one other thing is I may get do some uh, HA with this image I'm doing, or I may not. I don't know. It depends how it turns out. Uh, I'm using my Canon uh, 600D. It's a modified camera, uh, and uh, it works really well, but I don't have any filters on it right now. So we'll see what the image looks like, and if need be, I'll go out with my astronomic clip-in uh, seven nanometer HA filter. The one thing with those filters is they're very good, but man, it's hard to it's hard to frame something with those things because you can't see squat. At least not with with my 600D because the maximum ISO on that thing is uh, 6400. 
maybe some of you guys that have the newer cameras that have ISOs up to 50,000, it might be more appropriate to use it with that. But with, uh, with mine, it's really tough going. So I don't recommend that for a beginner. Uh, anyways, uh, that's all I have. And um, hopefully uh, I'll have an image. We'll see you later. Okay, folks, let me run through what I did. I'm finally done with this object. It, it took three weeks, so it's three weeks later. Anyways, here's the RGB data. I ended up collecting a total of 96 60 second shots. Here's what it looks like. This was the raw data. And then I did automatic background extraction and uh, maximize the um, exposures and I got this terrible looking thing. And then I did some more manipulation. I wound up with this, and this is the RGB data. And then I managed to um, use Pix Insight, but I didn't uh, maximize the total exposure. I did a uh, slight increments using histogram transfer function and uh, wound up producing this image. Which isn't too bad, I think. I think if you can, on all these images, you can see the nebula, only these ones are super noisy over here. One thing I should mention I used Deep Sky Stacker for stacking. I always use Deep Sky Stacker for um, doing RGB stuff with my Canon camera. And I should also mention I did not take flats with this. In fact, I didn't even take uh, darks or bias for those ones. So that was just raw data and that's why there was they were looked so bad or one of the reasons okay next i took five second exposures so i can zero in on the interior a little bit and here's what i ended up producing this is my final five second shot i, I took 10 five second shots okay and I managed to take some HA after all. And the HA came out real well, and I'm glad I did it. So here's the HA, and you can see all the nebulosity now. Again, they're very noisy, but that's to be expected with my camera. And when you have an HA image and you're taking it with color, what you should do is you actually separate the colors in just just use the red channel data and that's what i did here this is the red channel of my ha data and then i manip oops not that and then i manipulated it a little bit more and wound up getting this okay so that doesn't look too bad not great but not too bad and then i used pixel math and combined the HA into the red channel of the RGB image and I wound up with this. So now we're getting somewhere. Now we're starting to look pretty good. And finally, I wound up getting this and this is my final image. Here, let me show it to you. So I think it looked, came out real well, especially considering how it started off. It started off with this. I always like doing these comparisons. You start off with this and you wind up with that. It's amazing to me. Uh, I should also mention, since I used Deep Sky Stacker, the, oh, and I had three separate images. They didn't line up with the stars. So, but that's easy to do. That's easy to fix using PixInsight, using the star align function. And it aligned all the images and then I cropped them and whatnot and uh, made them the same scale and everything like that. Okay, well, I think that's all, and I'm glad to be done. I'm, I'm happy with the way this turned out, and I hope you learned something. I did, and we'll see you later.